Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Flipper. My name's Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. What that means is I'll buy a product for the sole purpose of flipping it online for a profit. Now in today's episode, I'm gonna take you through my eight sales strategies that I use on a daily basis to make more sales faster on Facebook Marketplace. So if you're brand new to the channel, I do these videos every single week talking all things online reselling. If that's something that you're potentially interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Give this video a like because it really does help the YouTube channel out a lot. Now, no more mucking around. I've got eight really good strategies that are going to help you sell more. So let's get started. Now, if you're not currently using Facebook Marketplace as a sales selling platform, I would highly recommend that you look to do so. Not only is it a really simple to upload process, but you've got absolutely no fees associated and generally the people are going to come to you to collect the item. So I would really recommend that you try to look to cross list some of your items that you use on another platform. So if you're using eBay, Depop, Macari, Poshmark, whatever the case may be, think about putting a few of those items as well onto Facebook Marketplace and just see how you go. Because really you've got absolutely nothing to use and there's a few things that you can do to really help the process of the sale on Facebook Marketplace, which is what I'm going to touch on today. Now, with the poll process for today's episode, I'm going to assume that you've already listed about 20 or 30 items on Facebook Marketplace. You've got a really catchy title, you've got awesome photos, you've got a perfect description that details exactly what the item is that you're trying to sell, and you've also gone ahead and fairly priced the item as well. So you've done everything that you need to do. You're at the point where they're all listed, you're waiting for that first message to pop up from a potential buyer saying, is this still available? These are some of the things that you can do to help yourself from this moment. Because unlike those other platforms, Facebook is very much a one-on-one. -on -one. The instant messaging service allows you to actually manipulate the sale as a seller. So I love Facebook Marketplace in that regard because I can do a few things to help the process go along. And that's what we're gonna get into today. So if you haven't used Facebook Marketplace, consider it because it can really get some sales quick. So let's get into tip number one. Tip number one, guys, is you've got to remember to renew your listings every seven days. And what I mean by that is if your listing has been up there for a few days, it will be slowly working its way down the chain of popularity. Facebook will always put the newly listed items up first. And your if your item hasn't sold within a few days, it's slowly going to go lower and lower down that list and ultimately make it harder for your item to actually sell because buyers won't be seeing it as much as they do when they first gets published. So Facebook will help you out in this regard and they'll give you a notification after seven days seeing if you want to renew the listing. What that does is it just brings you back up to the top newly, newly listed items. Tip number two that I've got for you guys is around attention. Attention on Facebook Marketplace is the biggest thing. You want to know that people are looking at your item, people are saving your item, and people are sharing your item. Say for scenario number one that you've got a stack of people that have looked at it, but nobody's actually messaged you yet. Nobody said, I want your item. So you've got all these saves and all these shares. My strategy for this to gain further attention would be to just simply price drop by a few dollars. If it's a hundred dollar item, I'd drop the price down to 95. What it does on Facebook send is it will alert all of your saves and shares to say, that you've altered your description in some way. From there, I think that will help reel in a sale or two for you. It'll, it'll reel in somebody to go, hey, I'll actually buy your item. So that's the first step to gain further attention quicker if you've got a lot of attention already on the item. The second side of the coin is that you might have horrendously priced your item way too expensive. You've got to bring it back down to 60 bucks. It's $150 initially, so there's a big discrepancy there. I also tell you that put it up for about four or five days and, and it's really fallen down the line and people just aren't looking at it. Just simply dropping the price to $60 after four days probably doesn't gain attention quick enough. My thoughts in this aspect, which is what I always do, is I'll delete the item, I will do a refresh of title, description, photos, and just put it back out into Marketplace as a newly listed item for the correct price of $60. So at the end of the day, with these two strategies around attention, you as a seller need to constantly be looking at every single one of your items to say, hey, is this getting a lot of attention or is it not? And regardless of what answer it is, what can you then do to speed up the process? Because you certainly can do something every single time. Tip number three, guys, is instant communication is key. It's so crucial to the sale. The minute you get that, is this still available notification, within a few minutes, you need to be replying back saying, yes, it is, and then following up with open-ended questions to get the ball rolling to convert the sale. It's really up to you now to make sure that you're asking the right questions, you're really rapid on your response, rate to get the deal done. It's just incredibly crucial. Once you've got through all the open-ended questions, you've asked them yes, when are you available for collection? You know, are there any questions that you have around the item? You want to be asking, engaging their you know, interest levels to make sure that they are completely interested in buying. 
from there, if say for instance, you've agreed on say a next day pickup or an afternoon pickup and you're talking in the morning, it is so crucial for you as the seller to follow up with a message on any time that might've gone by to re reintroduce the collect time. So if it's a three o'clock pickup and you're messaging at eight in the morning, I would always be messaging at 12 o'clock note to say, just confirming you're still good for 3 p.m. What that does is it puts it in their mind to say that they can't, or just psychologically, they can't really you know, shirk it and not come and pick up your item. It eliminates the no-shows a little bit more. I mean, no-shows will always be a part of it, but by always following up and just saying, are you good for three o'clock? It just shortens the time frame for them to be able to actually run away from the sale. So always ask open-ended questions, instant communication. The minute you get a message, always reply and always follow up to make sure that they are actually gonna come to collect your item because no-shows are a big part of this game and this is a great way to eliminate some of that. Tip number four is the 24 hour rule. The 24 hour rule is that when you're talking to this person on rapid fire instant communication, you're also trying to tee up a sale within a 24 hour time period. The statistics on sales after the fact of 24 hours from initial message it plummets. Sales just simply just don't go ahead the longer it takes for that person to come and collect the item. You want to be asking your open-ended questions and ultimately moving your way to secure the sale within a 24-hour time period. So how you can do that is just simply asking, when's a great time to pick up? What time would you prefer? Anything that you can do right away to get the deal done would be in your best interest. So 24 hour rule, try not to extend it. If it, I mean, yes, there are gonna be times when it does extend. So there'll be points there where they say, look, I just simply can't come until Monday morning. Would that be okay? There'll be some strategies around dealing with that and you can still make the sale from it. But just in general, you wanna be making sure that you're closing your sale within a 24 hour time frame from the minute they first send you a message. Something that's gonna help you with the 24 hour rule as well for tip number five is to always push urgency. Urgency is gonna help you make a sale better than anything else out there. Putting urgency on the fact that there are other people looking. Somebody else is gonna come. If you want this item, somebody's coming in the next 12 hours because I've been flooded with inquiries. The amount of times I've said that when I've literally only had one or two views on an item, no shares, no saves, but I've said that it is the most in-demand item on the market. It will always generate a quicker sale. I've had scenarios where people have said, look, I can pick it up in a couple of days time. And I always say to them, look, that's fine. Come and have a look in a few days time. I won't put a pending or a hold on your item, but if somebody else buys it, somebody else buys it. I have had a lot of messages. So if you do want to come and get it, you are first in line. Feel free to come today or tomorrow morning and we'll get the deal done. And in a lot of cases, people will say, oh, geez, okay, I don't want to lose out on the item. If you've got plenty of interest, it, it's scare tactics. It just gets them coming quicker and gets the deal done. And as I said, with the 24-hour rule, sales plummet after 24 hours. That person you're talking to that wants to pick it up in a few days is likely to probably fall away and never even purchase the item. So I don't like to say pending at any point in time. I like to simply say, hey, that's fine. Come in a few days time, but I won't mark pending. This item's probably going to go. And it generally gets them to your house a little bit quicker for the collect. So always push urgency, no matter if there is urgency or if there is an urgency, it will get the sale done quicker. Now for tips number six, seven, and eight, I wanna talk about the thing that I know you're all thinking is, Matt, I don't like Facebook Marketplace because there are too many no-shows and there are too many low-ball offers. Well, you're correct, that's part of the game. I would substitute the fact that you've gotta deal with that for the fact that you don't have any fees. So I'm still gonna use Facebook Marketplace no matter what in that regard, but these couple of steps are gonna really help with the no-show aspect of Facebook Marketplace. So tip number six that I've got for you is keep backup buyers up your sleeve in case you do get that no show. These are really around the, the fact that these people have said that they're gonna come, you've agreed on a time, whether it's over 24 hours or not, and they just simply haven't showed up. I would never mark an item as pending because what it does is it allows more new buyers to message you saying, hey, is this still available? I would always just be honest and just say, look, somebody else is gonna come and collect, but if they don't pick it up, you are the next in line. And I would just build a running tally of second buyers up your sleeve that if you do get that no-show, you've also got somebody else ready to go. So step number six is always have second buyers up your sleeve by not marking the item as pending and always replying to every single inquiry you get on an item. Just because you've got that first buyer doesn't mean you can just disregard the rest of the inquiries you get on an item because if that one no-shows, you've just completely lost all your other potential buyers. Keep the conversation alive, always speak to them, tell them the truth, keep them updated until that item actually sells. 
Tip number seven is asking for a bank deposit. Say for instance, the sale is gonna take about 20 to 24 to 48 hours to actually go through and sell. A great way to secure it, one, to make sure the sale goes through, no no-shows, is to just simply ask for a deposit. Now, when it comes to that, people are actually quite receptive because they understand on Marketplace there are a lot of no-shows and you generally do need to pick your item up fairly quickly. So if somebody really wants your item and you're saying to them, look, happy for you to have it and collect whenever you can, could you please place a deposit? And they'll most likely say yes. In a lot of scenarios for myself, that's been the case. And it just secures the sale in my regard. So I know that I'm not having to worry about the no-show. What do I do, I guess, on a deposit front? If the item's under $100, I'll ask for a full deposit purchase. So I want the whole amount. Send it to me on my bank detail. Send me a receipt of notification that you've actually made the payment. And if the, if the item's over $100, then I'll ask for 50%. So if it's a $200 piece of furniture and they want to pick it up in three days time, I'll ask for a 50% deposit right there and then to secure the sale. That is when I'll mark for the very first time an item is pending, or at least I'll tell all the other buyers that the item's likely sold um, because I know that the sale's more guaranteed once I've got some form of payment in my hand. So don't think or, or be afraid to ask for a bank deposit because if this person really wants your item, they're gonna be paying you the full price when they see you anyway. So they may as well pay a bank deposit. It just locks them into the sale and it avoids the no-show. So always ask for the bank deposit. And tip number eight is always asking or providing the service that you can deliver the item for a small fee. A lot of people are lazy. People do no-shows because they simply get to the point that they said they were gonna arrive and they just don't wanna do it. If you're saying that you're providing the service of delivery to your local area for a small fee, one, you're gonna get the deal done. Two, you're gonna get it done when you said you wanted to get it done. And three, you're gonna make some more money out of it. You're gonna get a little fee that's gonna add on to the profit overall. So there's some real wins in there for you. You're gonna get everything just ticked off and for them, they're gonna get their item. In a lot of cases, the benefit to marketplace is the fact that they simply come to you. But on the other hand, you do get the no-shows and offering delivery is a great way to continue that process of sale in a really quick and fast manner. But also too, obviously getting a few extra dollars in your pocket. So tip number eight, always offer delivery. And that's even if it's a small item, small or big, if it's within your area and you can make it a part of your day and go and do the delivery, but then attend to something that you are always gonna do anyway. To me, that just sounds like extra money. So always consider that option. Tip number eight, offer delivery. So they are my eight sales strategy tips and tricks for you guys that hopefully helps generate a few more sales. Please comment below what your favorite tip was because it'd be great to get that thought from you guys. Um, remember to give this video a like and to subscribe. I'm gonna keep doing these videos. Let me know what other tip videos you'd like me to do because I do them every single Tuesday. Thursday, I'll be back for a day in the life. Looking forward to having you come along for the ride. And then Sunday, I'll do my what sold video where hopefully I've got a bunch of sales that I can give you some info on. So thanks very much for watching, guys. Look forward to catching you in the next episode. Bye for now.